Much of the great leverage of using computers these days is using them not just for computationally intensive tasks, but using them as a window into communication intensive tasks, as you know. And never have I seen something more powerful than this computation combined with this network uh, technology that we now have. So not only networks throughout an organization, but of course the wide area networks through the internet. And I just want to focus on um, something that's very close to my heart, which is living in a high-speed networked world um, to get your job done every day. Now, how many of you manage your own storage on your computers? How many of you back up your computers, as an example? How many of you have had a, a crash in the last, you know, three years, four years? <laughs> right. Okay, um, let me <clears throat> describe the world I live in. Uh, about eight years ago, we had high-speed networking connected to our now obsolete Next hardware, running, running uh, Next Step at the time. And because we were using uh, NFS, we were able to take all of our personal data, our home directories we call them, off of our local machines and put them on a server. And the software made that completely transparent. And because the server had a lot of RAM on it, in some cases it was actually faster to get stuff from the server than it was to get stuff off your local hard disk because in some cases it would be cached in the RAM of the server if it was in popular use. But what was really remarkable was that the organization could hire a professional person to back up that server every night and could afford to spend a little bit more on that server so maybe it had redundant disk drives, redundant power supplies. And you know, in the last seven years, you know how many times I have lost any personal data? Zero. Do you know how many times I've backed up my computer? Zero. I have computers at Apple, at Next, at Pixar, and at home. I walk up to any of them and log in as myself. It goes over the network, finds my home directory on the server, and it just is, I'm, I've got my stuff wherever I am. Wherever I am. And none of that is on a local hard disk. Now, what's really interesting to me is that gigabit ethernet's coming. With gigabit ethernet, it is faster in every case to talk to the server than it is my local hard disk. And one of the things I'm really excited about is to look at that personal computer and take out every moving part except the keyboard and the mouse. I don't need a hard disk in my computer if I can get to the server faster. See, because I look at that network connection as NFS dial tone. I get internet dial tone and NFS dial tone over that wire. And I don't care how it's done. I don't care what box is at the other end. We haven't used an auspex at Next, right? Big one. Spent half a million bucks on it. It was worth it. We did a lot of software development. Nobody ever lost anything. Nobody had to worry about that stuff. But you could have smaller ones. But managing a network like this is a pain in the butt. Setting it up, getting it all to work is really complicated. One of my hopes is that Apple can do for this new type of network, it's not so new, but for the average person it's new, with gigabit ethernet technologies and some of the new server stuff that's coming down the pike and some thin, thinner hardware clients, hardware clients that are thinner, not necessarily software, that Apple could make that as plug and play for mere mortals as it made the user experience over a decade ago. That's, that's one of the things where I think there's a giant hole. And I can't communicate to you how awesome this is unless you use it. And you, what you would decide within a, few, you know, a day or two is that carrying around these non-connected computers or computers with tons of state in them, tons of data and state in them, is Byzantine by comparison. So 
there's about three or four things like that where I think there is enormous opportunity. And where I think, you know, a lot of times, both in people and in organizations, your greatest strength is also can be your greatest weakness, or your greatest weakness can be your greatest strength. Apple has been highlighted as having an incredibly great weakness of being totally vertically integrated. Well, it doesn't make its own semiconductors, but it makes the hardware, it makes the software, it controls the user experience, it does the marketing and distribute, it does the marketing. And <clears throat> many people are constantly calling for Apple to get out of the hardware business because of that weakness that they perceive. I don't agree with that. I perceive it as a potential weakness if not managed right. I also perceive it as Apple's greatest strength if managed right. Let me give you an example. Um, plug and play. I mean, to get anything done in the PC industry seems to take years. Plug and play was an initiative that was launched five years ago. You know, it took two years to get it all together between Microsoft and Compaq and then Intel fought with them and finally they got Intel into the fold. And here we are five years later and still it doesn't really work. Every little thing, you can imagine how long it will take them to make a thin client standard and servers that plug and play with thin clients easily. I mean, we're into like, you know, the third millennium. So <laughs> the fact that Apple controls the product design from end to end, hardware, software, gives Apple an incredibly unique opportunity. It's the only company in the industry that does that. An incredibly unique opportunity to tackle some of these really gnarly complex problems that could have enormous potential advantage in the market if we could solve them. And I think solve them literally a half a decade to a decade sooner than you know, the 93-headed monster out there in the Wintel space. Now they have their advantages too, don't get me wrong. But I think one of our great advantages is that we can really have the vision that spans all the disciplines. We control all the disciplines to actually implement a vision much faster if we can get ourselves all going in a few directions. That really sounded great. And mm -hmm. as you were talking about it, I was sort of getting caught up in it. And then it occurred to me, that's a really great vision for Apple. But then I asked about holes for developers. Uh-huh. Well, I'll give you a simple one. I'll give you tons of simple ones. Um, Microsoft hasn't committed to port their suite of applications yet, have they? To Rhapsody. What are you waiting for? <laughs> you know, Adobe. Do you know how many copies of a Photoshop Adobe ships every month? Bazillions! <laughs> That's the foundation of Adobe, is Photoshop. Adobe has not, to my knowledge, committed to port Photoshop to Rhapsody yet. What are you waiting for? This is huge. This is the opportunity to do something, the next generation of apps. Look, there was a company called Lighthouse that was actually bought by Sun about six months ago. They were the best next step developer. They had 18 developers, okay? They had by far and away the best presentation application I've ever seen in my life called Concurrence. I still use it today. They had, you know, they had a suite of five different apps and each one was best of breed. The best spreadsheet I've ever used in my life called Quantrix that was modeled on improv. How many people have used improv here? Okay, improv is the best spreadsheet in the planet because it incorporates a whole new way of thinking about spreadsheets. It's about for people like me that want to model things. It's phenomenally powerful. And Lotus couldn't figure out to compete with themselves with one, two, three, so they gave it up and Lighthouse copied it. 18 developers, five apps, because of the power of this development environment. What Apple's going to be putting in your hands is a system that you can build apps for five to ten times faster than anything out there, period. And you can choose to do one of two things or somewhere in the middle with, these, with this power. One, you can make existing complexity apps five to ten times faster, which means that three people really can go into a garage on day one with a concept and come out in the market with a product six to nine months later. Now, I haven't seen that in our industry in 10, 12 years. 
And that's very, very, very exciting to me. And some people say, well, it'll only run on a Macintosh, or it'll only run on Rhapsody, selling on Intel, maybe, and selling on a Macintosh. Jesus, it's only a single digit percent of the market. Well, Jesus, it's only three plus million copies a year. I wouldn't mind selling into that market. It's huge, especially if you're a three person, 10 person, 18 person software development company. Lighthouse was making a good living selling to the next step market. Give me a break. You know? So, you know, I think there's a huge market out there. And I think there's tr still tremendous loyalty towards Apple by some of these customers. I mean, if Adobe doesn't want to write the next generation Photoshop on Rhapsody, some of you should. You know, maybe they'll buy you. <laughs> Who knows? But the, the publishing market out there would love to see the next generation thing, but even more so, you know who would love it even more than them? Apple, right? You, you walk in here and say, I've got something that's five times better than Photoshop for these publishing people. And if enough of the publishing people agree to where you can convince Apple that that's really the case, you know how much Apple spends on marketing each year? They should spend some of it on these apps and telling the world about them. So if you come up with something really great, I think it's going to get out there. And I think that um, this is a pretty unique opportunity. But I want to get back to the last point I was making. One of the other things you can do with these powerful tools, in, a, in addition to building a current complexity app five, ten times faster, is build an app you couldn't build on any platform. And that, to me, is the most exciting is to build an app you could not build on any other platform because it's all about managing complexity, right? You're developers, you know that. It's all about managing complexity. It's like scaffolding, right? You erect some scaffolding, and if you keep going up and up and up, eventually the scaffolding collapses of its own weight, right? That's what building software is. It's how much scaffolding can you erect before the whole thing collapses of its own weight. Doesn't matter how many people you have working on it, doesn't matter if you're Microsoft with three, four hundred people, five hundred people on the team, it will collapse under its own weight. You've read the Mythical Man Month, right? Basic premise of this is a software development project gets to a certain size where if you add one more person, the amount of energy to communicate with that person is actually greater than their net contribution to the project, so it slows down. So you have local maximum and then it comes down. We all know that about software. It's about managing complexity. These tools allow you to not have to worry about 90% of the stuff you've worried about so that you can erect your five stories of scaffolding but starting at story number 23 instead of starting at story number six. You can get a lot higher. 